in terms of going to the clinic here in the UK, it's not mandatory for you to get a HIV positive um, HIV test. But when they do do checks, they will do the runs on like gonorrhea, chlamydia, blah blah blah, and they will ask you if you want to have a HIV test. Do you think it should become mandatory so young people and older people can reflect on that if you know they I, find I out? I don't think you should force anyone to do anything, but they should definitely try and try and make you. And I think they are already. They, they're they're strongly urging you and. They're, and it's so easy to do, so I, I don't, I don't see why. They do it more in the states than they do over here. Yeah, like like when I was in Los Angeles, they had, uh, they even, I mean, they they have a lot of free testing. They even had a like a like a bus that went around mm -hmm. all the areas in Hollywood and, and in West Hollywood, especially when they had club nights. Yeah, and they would kind of, uh, they would have people standing outside. It's almost like a party bus, and they would say, "Oh, come in, come in and get the free." free test and then you'll find the result in 20 minutes. Do you think they should do more of that in the UK? Oh definitely because because there they also have like big billboards and, and, and things urging people to, to get checked out and here I see nothing really. I mean I think I've seen one one little uh, bus um, ad from, from Terence Higgins Trust but it doesn't seem like there's anything coming from the government or anything. That was the last time I saw that was like 20 years ago in the 90s. And because of the um, rise in HIV here in the UK do you think it should be pushed? even more so yeah i mean like what they did in the 80s i know it was scary because i was a kid then and they they really really scared you with the tv ads uh, like uh, tombstones and things falling down yeah not like these ones but yes that, that was, and they were scary but it, it really hit hard and it made me that was actually one of the reasons why i didn't really go out and have sex until i was a lot older because it really really scared me uh, and, and it was a good thing and it it's i mean it's a serious thing you have to you have to warn people and I think that now it's a bit sort of, well, it, it kind of exists, but it's most, especially young people, they don't really know what it is. They just know some kind of scary, deadly thing from the 80s that may lurk around somewhere, but it's nothing to worry about. Relationships. Have you ever dated anyone with HIV? Yep, uh, a couple actually. So, and I was negative. Though, so, yeah. How did those relationships go? Uh, well, I mean, I just want to comment on the, the first one really because mm -hmm. that's the one where it really kind of ended. But it, it it was it was bad, but nothing to do with HIV. It was bad for all the other reasons like cheating and personal differences and all those things. But HIV was never an issue because okay. I was educated enough and I, I knew that because it was medication and because it was safe as well, mm -hmm. the likelihood of me getting a thing was like next well probably zero. So I was that was never a worry at all. Uh, as long as he took those pills, and, and I saw him take them every night. So yeah, and every time he took them, I thought, okay, he's taking them. I'm safe. Okay. And was he the guy that you got the condition from? Oh no, 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 definitely not. No, I, I got I got tested like you know, five times after that end. No, it wasn't. Definitely not. Okay. Are you still in contact with him? Uh, occasionally. Uh, I mean. Where he is at the moment, it's kind of hard to get uh, to talk to him for other reasons. But yeah, as often as he is allowed to talk, I can talk to him. And I kind of know who I got it from, and like I said, it was a broken condom, and it was somebody else who didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, so they didn't know? Well, um, I mean, he definitely didn't know his status. Um, so, and he definitely didn't take any medication. How do you handle with rejection if you've been through it? So. I mean, obviously, a lot of people don't know all this science a bit about medication and protection, and uh, so because, like I said, it's very scary for many people. So uh, what I try to do is, like in some countries, like I know in Sweden and some states in America, it's uh, it's a criminal offence not to tell people yeah. straight away that they put you in jail for that. So you have to disclose it, and then you pretty much have to get a signed piece of paper because no one's to know whether you told them or not. Yeah, um, but. If I'm in a place like the UK or another place where they don't have such laws, I sort of try to break the ice by asking them, like, how would they feel about people with HIV? And if they say, oh, I can never be with anyone like that, then you kind of know that it's going to be very hard, if not impossible. Do you still go on with sex? Um, I admit a few times I've not sort of told, I've just said, okay, well, let's not talk about that, let's just have fun. Yeah, but obviously I've been responsible. Okay. But I think that afterwards they probably maybe be a bit upset. So I don't feel too good about that. Okay. But I think most people who have HIV probably 
do that at one point or another. And sometimes it never comes up. And if they don't ask, I mean, if they were to ask me directly face to face, do you have it? Obviously, I wouldn't lie. I would say, yes, I did. Okay. But very often, I mean, if it's going to be serious, then you have to discuss it. But if it's just something casual, yeah. As long as, like I said, because before I wouldn't, when I wasn't on treatment for those few months, yeah, then I would pretty much have to discuss it straight away because there was a potential risk of spreading it on. But now that I know that there is no risk and with the other protection, I don't feel that I have to tell people morally. Yeah. So going back to the laws in Sweden and the States, do you think that the law should apply here in the UK? I'm, I'm not actually too summed up on the law here in the UK, but do you think it should be implemented? Well, I think that, I mean, I've, I've seen stories about Sweden where people deliberately do not get tested because if you're not tested and you don't know, technically you can't be charged with anything. But once you're tested and you have a status, then suddenly you have to disclose by law. So it's kind of uh, uh, it's, it's kind of against you. So I think the law in places like Sweden and those states in America and maybe other countries will have it all discourage people from testing because with the testing comes this burden of having to, to discuss it, this legal burden. I know in the UK I looked into this that from what I understand the law says as long as it's not maliciously infected the body. Uh, like we discussed earlier, yeah. uh, you can't be charged because uh, two people, both people, have to take responsibility. Yeah. So, um, so, so um, the, the, there is there is not the same law here. The law here is just it's more based on common sense, which is the way I prefer it. So I think here, because they don't have that burden on you, the, if you get tested, and you get a diagnosis. It's not, it's not, it's not never going to go against you. So I think that the, the way it works here in the UK is. Uh, Okay, so there's been a lot of disturbing posts over the last few years um, involving women and men who have the condition and they have been said to be allegedly purposely um, infecting other people. What's your opinion on that? I don't know, people do all sort of malicious things. so. Uh... I mean, there's a lot of accusations going around as well, so it's always easy to, once someone transmits, it's always easy to accuse the other person, so I would take that with a, with a pinch of salt. Uh, some of them are probably true, and if they do, again, I mean, if if you think that someone's someone's purposely done something to you, it may not be the easiest thing to know, but go and see a doctor, and, and if it's soon, really soon after, you might be able to get the, the pen and hopefully stop it. But I find it very hard that most of those people malicious to do it. And if they do, it's the same as if you, you stick someone with a knife, I guess. It's a bad thing. There are many ways to help people. Yeah. So I don't think we should focus on HIV. How many people know about your, your condition? Probably about, I mean, it's you, and it's probably about a handful. Because I don't feel the need to, to tell the whole world, especially in long now, since I'm really fine. But what if you get sick? Well, I don't think I'll get sick because of this now. I'll okay. get sick of something else if I do. Do your family know? Some of them know, some of them don't. Close family? Yeah. Okay. Are you in a relationship now? Well, I've been in that on and off, so I guess at the moment it's off. Okay, and they are aware of your status? Oh yeah, and there's never been an issue for them. Okay. And when you first told them, what was their reaction? Uh, well, I mean, they are kind of the same boat, so it's uh, not really uh, an issue there with that, as long as we don't get anything else. Okay. Porn. Do you watch porn? Uh, not anymore. Uh, okay. I'm now, when I was younger, but now I, I find it doesn't do anything. Yeah. Okay, so there's quite a lot of porn on the internet, uh, specifically being bareback in the gay community. Do you think that contributes to the virus spread here? Uh, no, I don't. That's I mean, true. people are going to do what people are going to do. I mean, it's, and I think when you're watching that, people probably watch a lot more than just focus on whether they have a, a condom on or not. I mean, yeah, some people get turned on by it, but I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's spreading. And I would hope that the people who do it, they, they probably get tested or they're on. I saw actually um, a story in a uh, paper in Los Angeles about some gay bare, bareback porn and all those actors were on prep anyway so they couldn't spread it mm -hmm. so at least we know that they're safe and it actually says now i think they have a rule there that whenever you if you buy such a movie in at least in, in la it has to say that they're either using condoms or they're on prep so okay. you know it's like a sort of statement mm -hmm. so you know that it's sort of like no animals were hurt during this like no gay actors were hurt during this production because they're on prep no gay actors 
You know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they should do that here too. So if they have that, if they have to do bear banking, they should yeah. be on, on the 